Hi everyone, I'm Tom Quigley and welcome back to another video. This particular video is going to be based on tone. And you think to yourself, why is tone such an important thing within drawing? Well, it's the fundamental thing that ties everything together and makes something look more realistic. It gives it form, it gives it some substance within the, within the piece of work. And it's something that a lot of people get wrong. So we're gonna cover the basics. Um, it's gonna be split up into three sections. The first one's gonna be weight of line, which basically is the, the pressure of handling on a pencil, how hard you're pressing on the page. Second one is cross hatching and hatching. And then we're gonna use both of those things and put them together into a small activity afterwards. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna set up my piece of paper, uh, talk about the materials that you're going to need for the activity, and then we can get started. So I've done my outlines on here and I've got these two different sections. The first one is just a long rectangle. I actually use a ruler to outline this. So if you've got the width of a ruler, just draw on the top line, the bottom line, and then close either side off. And underneath there, I've written the words light and dark. You can do it either way. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. It's just to show that we're going to go from a transition from dark to light. And then the second one, we've drawn these five boxes. Now these boxes are gonna be for the cross hatching and the hatching. Uh, I've left a space at the bottom here for the third activity. I'm not gonna do anything on there whatsoever at the moment. I just want you to concentrate on these two things. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna demonstrate this particular task. And then I'll probably will do a time lapse of the, the task being completed. And then we'll, we'll discuss it afterwards. So hopefully you managed to draw that out with no problems. What I'm going to just go through now is just a very, very short demonstration. It's just to talk about common mistakes, but also how to complete the first activity. So I've just got a piece of paper here. And the first thing that I just want to di discuss really is weight of line. And all it is, it's just a fancy word for pressure. So if I was, for example, just drawing a simple line on the page, doesn't make a difference on this particular thing. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that's a reasonably, you know, it's a, it's a medium weight of line, that isn't it? So if I if I add more pressure onto the page, then I've, I've got a really dark one. And this is this is where the realms of some students and some people who are just starting out with their artwork tend to go down the route of. You're just working a little bit too dark. And what happens if you want to adapt or change your drawing or you might get some elements wrong, then what you're going to find out when you rub it out, you're still going to see those dark pencil lines. So for anyone who's going to do in the drawing, try and always do it a little bit lighter. Now for the first one, we're going to put some of these lines, but we're going to join them up together. So I'm just going to do a very uh, rough one here. But if I started relatively dark at the top there, and as I work down the page, easing up until I'm hardly touching the page. Okay, so you can see that I've got a, it's a half decent transition from dark to light. I expect you to do it a little bit better than me. Uh, I'm just doing this very, very quickly for you. Uh, but what I'd like you to do is put that in that box. I'm gonna show you now on, on, on my piece of work and then hopefully you can have a go too. So that's the first activity done. Now you would have seen in my time lapse, I had to go over a few times just to make sure I got the values right. So value is just a, a term of, you know, if you think of black being the darkest value and white being the lightest value and all those tones in between, it's a term that you can use. So I had to go over it a little bit a few more times there to get it as dark as I possibly could. And then I just made a, a smooth transition there. So hopefully you found that um, helpful. Now, one other tip that you could probably do is actually put a ruler next to your line. So if you if you were going from side to side, you wouldn't go outside the box. It's always a useful tip there. But if you wanted to, to practice trying and getting it reasonably neat and tidy yourself freehand, then don't, don't, don't put a ruler on there. Then it makes it a little bit easier. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move on to the second activity. This is um, going to be for cross hatching and hatching. And you're actually going to start with the lightest this time. I started on the darkest on the first one. And each time you go into a box, you're going to layer up those hatchings. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on cross-hatching and hatching. 
and then hopefully I'll do, I'll repeat the process. I'll do another time lapse of the activity and then we'll discuss it afterwards. So I'm just going to do a very short video on cross hatching and hatching. But first of all, I need to draw out two simple boxes. But it did spark off a question that I get asked quite a lot of the time, is how do I produce a straight line without using a ruler? And the simple answer is, if I mark out my start point and my end point, I tend to just hover from one to the other one, making sure that I'm going to make the right choice, and then just lower my pencil until I've got a confident line. Just make sure you use your full arm when using it without using your wrist, okay? So there you go, got that one. And that one, I just need one more box. And there we go. Now we're gonna draw our eyes uh, attention to this first box and I'm gonna do a common cross hatching. Now, to the majority of people, that is cross-hatching. I've, I've, I've laid over lines in different directions, and as a result of it, I've got some darker tone. What I want you to do in your work is make your work look a little bit more sophisticated with some, some cleaner lines. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just focus on this line, first of all, as a bit of a, a guide to go off. And instead of going back and forward, just like we did in the first activity, with this one, all I want you to do is go in one strike. So you're starting off on the right hand side, outwards. I'm not coming back the other way. And I can keep going there. Just laying over those lines. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna rotate the piece of paper, do exactly the same. And I'll do a diagonal as well. Now hopefully you'll be able to see a difference between these two. And the fact that even some of these lines are a lot more straight, um, a lot more confident, and a lot cleaner within the piece of artwork. Another thing to consider when using hatching is that hatchings can be laid over the top of each other in a vertical manner. So I can lay over a tone like this. Also things to consider is if I'm doing some hatching, the more I space it out, the lighter the tone will be. So what we're gonna do now in the boxes I would like you, starting from the lightest, just start off with one uh, area of tone and then from the box next to it, layer over another one until all of those five boxes are completed. I'm going to do a quick uh, time lapse and then we'll see the results afterwards. So I hope that all made sense. I know sometimes it can be a little bit complicated and it's just those small adjustments that really, really make a difference. So we're on to the third activity, the final one. Uh, and as you can see on mine, I've got my, uh, my two tonal uh, exercises and then I've got my final one here. Uh, and you're probably thinking, what have you drawn out there? Basically, all I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to fold it. It doesn't really make a difference how you do it. If you can just see mine, sorry, mine's a little bit grubby, uh, folding it once and then fold it back on there so you can see that's that basically on there. And you can see I've drawn it out. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of depth about the difference between mine um, on the page and actually the piece of paper itself. A lot of people say, well, yours hasn't got tone in, uh, this piece of paper would have. Even though it's white, you can definitely see some different areas of tone. If I, if I put that in the light there, you can see where the light's shining off it um, and where there's darker tones on there. But there's another big thing that I wanted you to, to really focus on. And this is the last thing that I want to go into depth with, really. And it's about outlines and edges. 
and that whatever you draw, more than likely, it won't have an outline. Um, and a lot of people still try and struggle to understand what I'm on about, is that this white piece of paper does not have a dark line around it. If it did, it would look like this one. OK, um, and that's what you need to understand is that whenever you're drawing something, you need to make sure that you turn those outlines into edges. So when you're using these tonal activities in here, I what really love you to do is to just do a smooth transition from dark to light, wherever you see those shadows happening. But try and get rid of those harsh black lines around the edges. So I'm going to do one last time lapse now. Um, I won't be on too much longer. And then you can have a go, um, and that'd be great. So I've just been finishing off mine. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tonal uh, exercises uh, today. Um, if you have done so, please like and subscribe on YouTube or uh, give me a comment on Instagram. It's always worthwhile. I'm always learning on here, as I say. Um, I'm, I'm doing it while we're all off and we're all stuck at home. Um, but yeah, um, I'll see you until next time. See you later. Bye.